Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm jumping in for Alex, uh, doing a little lightning talk on the current status of KDevelop in 2015. Um, I kind of missed the deadline for a proper presentation this year while I was on vacation. So what I want to talk about today um, is yeah, that KDevelop is still alive and kicking. Uh, some, quite some people are still contributing actively and it's actually looking very, very good in my opinion. The um, framework port is uh, kind of done in the sense that both um, KDEF platform and KDevelop, as well as the core plugins like um, PHP and Python, are ported and work. Um, we're even at the stage where the core stuff has uh, got ported away from KDlibs4 support. And in so many areas, it's simply much better than whatever we had before. Not only because of the port, um, but also because we decided to strip away code. And for example, the CMake and C++ area we decided to simply cut away, throw away old code and replace it by something new. I'll talk about that in a, in a bit. That also means that by throwing away code, we obviously missed, uh, well, removed a couple of features. We do plan to bring them back sooner or later, but um, yeah, more on that later. CMake, um, you might have heard that before. We decided to use upstream instead of writing our own CMake um, yeah, engine in a sense. We are currently waiting with upstream, more in the sense of uh, waiting for them to do the work. Uh, upstream in this case is Stephen Kelly. He's actively uh, refactoring CMake, and in the long run will hopefully then give us something to work with. Um, what he's essentially creating there is a way to um, yeah, build some tool that we in, or any other IDE can then query and use for things like code completion help, but also build wizards on top to add files to a target and these kind of things. Um, thanks to the work that Alex did by removing the old code and working with the upstream yeah, external binary, uh, means that it's significantly faster. Uh, the only thing that is actually missing at this point, as far as I'm aware of, are the wizards. Like, uh, you add a new file and it asks you, like, do you want it to a certain text file, like that's what CMake files are. So in my opinion it's not that big a deal um, and it's certainly worth the uh, uh, reduced maintenance cost and uh, improved performance. On the C++ side we still do have our old C++ plugin um, that essentially is uh, implementation of parts of what also a compiler would need to do. So parsing, tokenizing and then lex uh, the, um, analyzing these uh, things to figure out template structures and yeah, it's still in more or less in the same stage as what you know from KD4 uh, KD based KDevelop, so it still does not support lots of C++11 features or if you throw in standard library stuff, it simply breaks. That's because we have concentrated on KDEF Clang instead. That's a completely new, tiny code base based on the C API that Clang from the LLVM project offers us. So um, it's really, really awesome, in my opinion, to see that work out. Um, it's not only supporting the latest and greatest in C++, it's also much more stable in a sense of if that crashes, and yes, sometimes Clang does crash, it does not take down the whole application because it's kind of sandboxed. Um, the performance is by far not as bad as I uh, feared. There are some cases where it's currently still less performant than what we had before. But overall, especially when you analyze a huge project, it is much faster than what we had before, especially on modern multi-core um, machines you hopefully use for developing. And yeah, the language support, as I said, is immensely better. Uh, some features are not yet implemented but being worked on, so do wait for that. Uh, we still have other languages, as I mentioned, PHP, Python, but also the QML, Ruby, CSS uh, stuff is still there. Um, even though it's not officially released, we have to do something about that, but it's all there. If you need any kind of these languages, do ask us and um, we can tell you how to do that. Uh, there's also new people coming into the community contributing a Go plugin and there's someone working on a, a Rust plugin for KText Editor which we then can also use in KDevelop. 
GDB has been worked on by another new contributor and it greatly improved the stability of the whole thing. There are still some issues when you work on embedded or across different machines. Um, that's definitely something I want to work on this week. Uh, but yeah, there also expect some improvements compared to what we have in our latest um, stable release based on KDE 4. And right now we have uh, three Google Summer of Code students working on KDevelop. Uh, sadly, none of them could attend Academy. First of all, we have Laszlo working on a unified checker framework in the sense of um, we had... Ooh, yeah, welcome. Welcome to my world. Um, that, um, that checker framework essentially aggregates problems we find in your code from all over, like be it a language analyzer, be it an external tool like Valgrind or Linter like crazy, and all that is now displayed in a central uh, place. And he's uh, further improving that part. Uh, Maciek, I hope I pronounced the name correctly, is working on C++ refactoring. It's a highly how do you say that, research and development project, like uh, we're not yet sure where this will go because it's based on Clang and the C++ API of Clang, which has no stability guarantees whatsoever. And right now it seems as if um, we can use it in some parts, in other parts we have to come up with our own solutions, so it's very interesting work. Uh, I'm very grateful that he's working on that uh, because someone needs to play around with it to see whether it's actually feasible to implement proper large-scale refactoring uh, based on Clang. Um, just a side note, Clang always works with uh, translation units and not, has no real idea of doing full project um, analysis. So that's something we have to fill the gap. And then last but not least, we have Sergey, um, who's doing a tremendous um, job in improving further the um, KDF Clang plugin, picking up where Kevin Funk uh, left off um, last year. I mean, Kevin Funk is also still uh, contributing, of course. Um, their performance improvements, adding missing features like in code completion, these kind of things he's working on and um, advancing quite nicely. Then, um, kind of the, the pain point we have forever and probably will have forever, I don't know. Um, I hope to get feedback from your side as well. Um, but right now, what we often hear is that the KDevelop UI is too cluttered, too distracting, whatever. Actually, based on Breeze and modern um, KF5, it doesn't look that bad anymore, in my opinion. And not only that, Alec also implemented an experimental concentration mode, or so he said. It's like a shortcut to hide craft. Uh, of course, you need to know this shortcut. We are aware that this is a... a strange way of handling this situation, but at least it is solving a very um, a problem we have. We simply did not come up with a proper UI that has the functionality we need and is not distracting. So if you have any ideas on that, uh, please attend our buff, send us emails, whatever. And right now, do try the concentration mode. It's uh, Windows C, so Meta C, um, to enable it or disable it. So it hides the menu bar, it hides the tool view buttons, but you can still blend them in based on shortcuts um, as you like. So yeah, kdevelop 5.0.0 is looking good in my opinion, so I really want to release the first alpha, beta, however you want to call it, um, this week I think. Um, what's really missing is uh, proper support for ktext editor plugins, so we can share even more code, meaning we can remove stuff on our side and blaming the Kate people, so blaming myself as well there, uh, partly, uh, if something breaks. Um, then the big open question is, do we want to ship something with old CPP still enabled, or do we want to start from scratch, and uh, not from scratch, but it directly go to KDEF Clang? Um, I actually tend nowadays to the, to the latter, but um, feedback on that is very welcome. And yeah, with that I can to the end, do you have any questions? Uh, and again, if you have feedback, either by email, ISC, or the buff on, what was it, um, Tuesday, I think, 12.30 in that room, wherever it is. So yeah, thanks. Questions?
Martin. It's going to be a completely new question. Um, have you, I mean, have, have you tried being inspired or looked at uh, Qt uh, SDK? The Qt creator, you mean? Yeah, the Qt creator. I mean, sure, we could copy stuff from their UI. Uh, some of the, that part uh, is extremely good and well done. I completely agree there. Other things, um, it, yeah, could be done, but I actually would like to, to find the proper, like, have someone with an idea and drive us forward. I don't simply want to play catch up by copying their work, even if it's very good in many areas. But let's see how it goes, right? Uh, I have been using KDevelop Platform for quite some time already, and I'm wondering how to use the KDevelop Client plugin because I'm normally just building this KDE source build, and that gives me some new KDevelop. But I don't think it built the client plugin. No, uh, but I can tell you, or I can put it in a wiki on how to do it. Probably best put it into the um, default KDE source build RC so that it gets at least built. Yes and no. Because that would mean I need to fix KDAF platform to not load both plugins and then both try to uh, analyze C++ code and then hell breaks loose. So, uh, <laughs> Can I have my stack lab back, please? <laughs> Is there anything else? There is one more question, I think. Oh no, I'm over time already, I think. Sorry.